Hi guys, I am Luan Skaggs and welcome. Today I want to show you how to make a hat using Dollar Tree hats. Now one of the reasons I want to do another hat video is there were some things that I didn't show you in the last video that I think is very important that I went a little bit too fast and some of you guys in the comment section was confused on how to get the brim of your hat straight. So I'll show you that in this video and I'll also show you some other methods to make sure that your hat is smooth and even. So if you guys would like to see how to use Dollar Tree hats to make hats and some more tips and tricks on how to make your existing hat better then come with me and let's get started to get started we'll take our hats and take off everything that is not needed so i went back to dollar tree to get some more hats so that i can make a matching handbag but i couldn't find any more hats at the dollar tree if you could find the hats anywhere else you could do the same thing that we're doing here with any hats that you have The Dollar Tree hat, they use hot glue to stick down the flowers. You could cut this out when you're sewing or you could leave it for the end and I'll show you how you could get this out after. Now this hat is very easy to take apart. All we have to do is find where they ended the hat and the loops and stitches would just unravel. It's exactly the same taking apart this hat as it was taking apart the placemats that we used to make the other hat. So we'll snip the thread, then we'll pull on the braid for a little while, then we'll turn the hat around and find the thread and start pulling from the front and continue pulling until the whole thing gets unraveled. Now we'll take the strip and wrap it on something small so that it's easy to move around our machine when we're sewing our hat. And this is how much I decided to leave on the last hat before going to the machine. This hat is a very small hat so it started to curve pretty early. So I decided to come in this much and now we'll go to the machine. And to keep control of the braid, we could use a pin or a clip to keep it in place once we have the amount of braid that we need. Now we'll place the hat in the center and we'll backstitch and start from the center coming out. Once we get a little ways, we want to clip the thread so that it wouldn't tie up when we try to go around on the other side. And if we want our top to remain flat, we would take the weave that we are sewing and we'll push it a little bit so that it would have a little bit of a gather. And that will help the top of the hat stay flat. So we'll keep on pushing a little at a time and having a little bit of a gather while we are sewing. And if you find that it might be gathering too much, you could always stop gathering and continue sewing normally. Just have a little bit of a balance. Watch how your project is going. And if you find it's too curvy, then you could continue sewing straight. You could adjust your method while you're sewing to make sure that you have a straight top. You'll continue sewing and get it as wide as you want it to be. And then we'll come back. So I made the top of the hat eight and a half inches. Normal hats that they sell in the store is a little bit too small for me so I wanted a bigger base and I also wanted to accommodate all the hair inside of it. So I made mine unusually wide. You could make yours as big or as small as you want. That is the beauty of customizing and making your own hat. After you're done sewing the top of your hat, it may not be exactly flat. If this doesn't bother you, you could leave yours just like this. But if you're a perfectionist, we'll take it to the machine and press it. To press the top of the hat, we'll take some natural material, like a cotton or a linen fabric, and place it over the top. Then we'll press it with some steam and we'll place something on the top of it to trap in the heat. This will ensure that when we take it off, the whole thing remains nice and flat. Once we are done pressing, we can take it back to the machine and start going down the sides. To start the sides, we'll place the top part of our hat against the side of our machine and we'll start to pull on the weave that we are sewing so that we could start forming the sides of the hat. I'm sorry guys, the camera decided to focus on the top part of the hat instead of where I was sewing. But I hope you get the idea. Mm -hmm. 
I'll continue sewing down the sides a bit and then I'll come back. This is how far the first hat got me. So I'm going to try it on and we'll see how it fits. I like the way that it fits even with all the hair. It is not tight at all. So I'll take it back to the machine and we'll start making the brim. Once we get back to the machine, before we start sewing the brim, we want to turn our hat inside out. I completely forgot to mention that on the last video. I was so busy running up and down trying to film the hat in all the different stages that I completely forgot. So before you start sewing the brim, turn the hat inside out so you'll be able to start sewing the weave. Then we'll start with the next braid by cutting off about this much. Once you turn your hat, you'll take the edge of the hat and put it down against the machine. And we'll take the braid that we just cut, place it under the edge and we'll continue sewing. If you cut it close to the top like I did, you'll have some gathers and this would help us with keeping the brim of the hat straight. While we're sewing the brim of the hat, for the first two or three inches, we want to push the weave that we're sewing a little bit so that we have a little bit of a gather. That will help keep the brim of the hat flat. Once you have this much of a gather, you could start sewing your weave normally. Continue sewing all the way down and I'll come back and show you how the hat looks using two hats. This is how it looks with two hat guys. This is way too small. And pay no attention to the wrinkles that we see at the top of the hat. We'll see about that later. Let's get back to the machine and add more hats. Since we are starting on the wider part of the brim, we could cut our next hat around this area. Then we'll add our starting piece from where we left off and continue sewing. I'll continue sewing this until it's finished and I'll come back with a try on to show you how much that looks like. And this is what the three hats together look like. If you saw the placemat hats, I think you get a lot more using the placemats than you do using these hats. So I definitely am going to add another one. And the process to add the other hats is the same. So I'm going to add a fourth hat and come back and show you how much you get for four hats. To attach the fourth hat, we do just like we did before. All we do is place the piece underneath the other piece, backstitch a little and continue sewing. When we get to the end, we'll take our piece that we have remaining and we'll tuck it under and have as smooth a transition as we could get and then sew on the top of it. Then we'll backstitch and end off our thread. To keep it neat, we'll turn our hat and cut off these extra pieces. And that's it guys, we'll now take it to the machine and get the brim of the hat flat. So I added the four hats, but before I even try it on to show you guys, I want to get out all these wrinkles that you're seeing here, so that we could try it on and see the final look. I don't have any more hats, so I can't add any more, even if I wanted a bigger size. So I'll first show you how to get out the wrinkles and to get our hat nice and smooth, and then we'll try it on. So we'll take a natural material like a cotton or linen and place it over the top of the brim, and we want to make sure and cover up the sides as well so that when the iron lean against the sides, it wouldn't melt the sides. Then we would take our iron with our steam and press the hat. Then we'll take something flat and press it in place to trap the steam so that our brim could remain flat. Once it's finished, we'll have a nice and flat surface. Once we're finished with one section, We'll turn our hat and continue doing this all the way around. We'll keep pressing and putting something flat to trap in the heat and we'll do this all around the brim.
Once I was done pressing the brim of the hat, all the wrinkles are out. So this is just a very easy and effective way to get rid of any imperfections that you may have on the brim of your hat. Now let's try on the hat and see how it looks. Once I was finished, I tried on the hat and no way it's staying up. There's absolutely no stiffness to the brim. This is the way I would like it to stay up, but this is what it does. So I'm going to sew a wire to keep it where I need it to be. So to get the brim with some structure, I'll be using this wire that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using this because it's yellow like the hat, but you could use any wire you have at home. We'll be covering it up anyway with bias tape, or if you planned ahead, you could cut and leave piece of the hat braid and use that to cover up the wire. To sew the wire in place, I'll be using a zigzag stitch. You want the zigzag stitch to be as close as you could get it, so the wire would be tight and secure. And you want to be very careful with the starting stitch. So take your hands and manually turn the wheel just to make sure that your needle is clearing the wire. Once you're confident and you have the stitch the way you want it to be, then you could zigzag stitch the wire all the way around the hat. I'll continue sewing the wire all the way around the hat and I'll come back and show you how we end it off. I was sewing the Dollar Tree wire around the brim of the hat and it came up a little too short for the brim of the hat. So I cut a piece of wire from another pack and I made sure that it was longer than the both sides. And all I'm going to do is start it from one side and go to the other side and connect the wires that way. Now if you're using regular wire, hopefully it's long enough that you could go all the way around. And all you have to do is make sure that it go beyond the wire that you started with. And when you get to the end where you have double the wire, you want to make sure that your stitch is wide enough to go over the boot wires. Once you get to the end, you could do a reverse stitch a couple of times just to make sure that the wire stays down and stays nicely in place. So this is how the hat looks right now with me having to join the wire and I'm going to use bias tape to cover up all of this. If you're making this hat using the Dollar Tree hats, you could leave a piece of braid from the hat and use that to cover up the wire. But since I wasn't planning to use the wire so I don't have any braid, I would use this bias binding that I have to bind off the edge. It comes in a row like this and I picked this up from an Amazon. If you would like to have this bias binding, I would leave the link for it in the description box. So I'll continue sewing this bias binding around the edge of the hat and then I'll come back and show you how I finish it off. And to finish off the edge of the bias binding, if you're using bias binding, all you do is just like you would have done for the wire, cut the bias binding a little longer so it would be able to cover where you started. Then you'll sew straight across and cover up where you started the bias binding. Then we'll backstitch just to keep everything in place and cut off our thread and we're finished. Now we could go and try on the hat and see how it looks. And this is a much better outcome. You could shape it and bend it and it keeps its shape any position that you put it in. I really like the structure that having the wire inside of the brim gives it. So shaping the hat have immense possibilities. And I just took a scarf that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and tied it on the top so it would have various colors that would match different outfits. And for decorating these sun hats, the possibilities are endless. Anything that you could imagine, you could do for decorations. I really love the versatility of these hats and the amount of things you could do with them. So this is how the Dollar Tree hat came out. And I would love to know in the comment section down below, do you prefer the Dollar Tree hat or the hat using the table mats? Leave it in the comment section down below.
and beside the red table mat hat, I decided to make the blue and the beige table mat hat. And this is how they came out. And if you guys would like to see how to make a matching handbag to go with the hats, then leave it in the comments section down below and I will do a video on that as well. So I hope that this was helpful and it answered a bunch of your questions. And let me know if there's any other things that you would like to see. Leave it in the comment section down below. Bye for now, stay blessed and have a blessed and wonderful day.